Scuttlebutt, the official podcast of the National Museum of the Surface Navy. I'm Marianne Fengler, and the last time we were together, we were talking about unusual aspects of working aboard Battleship Iowa. We had hardly finished, so we're going to get into it a little bit more. Um, the usual crowd in the room, me, Kyle Abbey, David Canfield, Mike Getcher. Let's get back into it. You know, moving on again, I'll, I'll be the guy pushing this this thing. Um, there's there's oddities everywhere here. Electrical. Um, there's tons of power on the ship, tons, but it's it's unique to the Navy and to maritime mm-hmm. world. And no um, 208. Yeah, no there's, 208. There's no 200 four, volt anywhere. You have to make 400 it volt or 115, but yeah. no 208. And and so the, the other thing is that most of the place here with the 120 volt that you would have in your house, and I'm looking behind you, there's plugs that are, just look like the house you have, but uh, almost all of it's fused. And it's so complex that I couldn't tell you, even though that thing's marked behind you, Kyle, where exactly that panel is. I have no clue. And well, so you're, you're, you're left doing, going hand over hand with wires looking for things, you know, just to see. Oh, my God. If somebody told me that I blew a circuit on the, on the main deck somewhere, <laughs> it might take me two hours to figure it out. Well, I that when, I, when I first got here and I was working in events... You impressed very strongly upon me about <laughs> where people could and could not plug in. I have whole di- like I laminated diagrams of the electrical grid back there, and I had it in the event locker. And yeah. I'd be like, well, "You have to," because okay, people, right people just assume they can plug things in like any other building, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Well, hey, I can't run my microwave and my toaster at the same time at home. So, <laughs> yeah, but but at least you just go reset the breaker instead of hunting down the fuse. Yeah, the interesting thing, and they're is really too, different fuses too. It's fused on both legs, and it's hot on both legs. Mm-hmm. So instead of having 115 on one side and common on the other, you have, what, 70, 74 on either side fused, and something like that? It's like 62. 62. To, um, yeah, to ground. Huh. And, uh, and so you can, you can blow the fuse <clears throat> on the common side, and, and it doesn't make sense. It's not something you would think to check. Most electrical stuff doesn't care, but, you know, I plugged the, the power filter in for a nice new shiny copier printer, you know, binder thing that we have. Mm-hmm. And it was like, um, no. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't like Just it. Just like, yeah. no, 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 no. I'm, I'm 100% not, not playing for, for with those this. For the electricians out there, there's no neutral. Yeah. It's a floating ground system, and it's pure delta, too. And the yeah. delta panels freak you out because yeah. if you lose one leg on a panel, it shows this crazy, like, 170 volt to ground Yes. nuttiness you're <laughs> yes. just trying to go you that put, doesn't make any sense you, at all you put the and, meter on it and you're like <clears throat> I'm, I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure I don't believe that but that's what the meter says yeah know? it's kind of crazy it, it is terribly complex and it's, it's I can hardly believe it you know yeah. um, and uh, we had somebody this is well this is kind of like a building too we had somebody trip off one of the main bus ties accidentally a few years ago yeah, wonderful yeah. people mm-hmm. total accident just down below where they shouldn't have been and press something. And the bus tie is where it's a huge breaker. It's the size of your refrigerator at home, Whoa. you know, and 4,000 amps in this case. And it ties um, all of the, uh, no, 1,600 amp. But there's no 2,000. God, I can't get anything straight today. But um, what's your name again? But um, <laughs> anyways, it, 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 we have a ring bus here where there's four buses, you know, or big switchboards in each engine room. And, and this one ties them together. So by losing that that bus tie, um, if we lose another bus connection, I could dump half the ship. You know, then you're dark in some areas. The lights are still on; they're fine. But we couldn't figure out why it wouldn't reset. I remember yeah. when we went. You went down there to reset it, and you took me with you. And you said, "Hold the radio. I'm going to go use the suicide stick. And if something happens, don't come and touch me. Go get someone or use the radio." And that's I was like, "I'm going to do what?" Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's right. literally what you do. And and they teach you in, in the old school that I grew up in to, to not only look away from a big breaker like yeah. that, but to use the hand you don't care about. Yep. Because something happens, it's going to go sideways. Yep. Um, so moving on to plumbing. So plumbing is interesting. <laughs> So raise your hand if you've got a poop story on a ship. <laughs> Nobody can see that. I was the only one that did What's it. Just, <laughs> just this morning, as a matter of fact. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, you know, yeah. it's, it's uh, all of our, our, our I'm going to be blunt here, all of our, our stuff, our poop goes down to a couple of different tanks back aft. And, um, you know, then it gets pumped overboard occasionally, if everything works oh, correctly. Overboard to a connection on to the To a connection. Yeah. It doesn't just yeah. go into the water. No. Right. no. Yeah. And there's a, it's called a CHT system, C meaning collection, H meaning holding, T meaning transfer. As I like others. to say, it's pronounced exactly the way it's Pretty spelled. Much. <laughs> so, you know, all of this stuff has to go in there and then it has to come out. And if the, the pumps get tripped off for some reason or there's some other anomaly, you know, you end up with this overflow condition. <clears throat> and actually the first time, uh, Bill and I have a great 
it's not even really poop. It's just like dirty, stinky, 30-year-old water, you know. And dungarees. Yeah, we, and we, 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 what the heck? <laughs> Something's going on. We, we have this, this pipe connection. It's down in one of the uh, new exhibit spaces. And, and finally, the, I just got mad. and said, all right, we're just can, doing this. The trash can with the little trickle into mm. it, like this 30-gallon trash can is going to hold this. And mm. it's like, boop. <laughs> nope. <laughs> it, just, it, it went flying out, and, and we just stood back and started laughing. And there, in, you know, six inches of water in, in the compartment. And oh, it was, ouch. It was, and, a pair, you know, and a pair of dungarees. Yeah. It, it, fortunately, it really wasn't poop and stuff. I mean, it was just 30 year old stinky far, water. As far as you know. And, and, and 30 now, years it had de- you de- de- decayed know. into something. It didn't go in my face. So, but yeah, so there's, there's, you, you have that. And that can happen, I suppose, in a building too. But this is a kind of a unique situation. We've actually had uh, one of the port side tanks aft be flooded because uh, the elbow, the copper nickel elbow on the bottom actually blew out. 5,000 gallons of poop. That's yeah, like, mm. it's Aww. weird because the pump was running and there was no overboard mm. and that happened a while and then there was overboard again and you're like, oh no. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no. So, um, so that's a unique experience. Um, the other mm. thing, uh, shifting again, you know, our, our gears here, but just getting around a ship. That's is, where I was going to go. You yeah. know, any, anywhere I go is a 500 foot walk. It seems yeah. like, you yeah. know, she's almost a fifth of a mile long. And almost. it's not a straight walk. It's walk, 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 lift yeah. up and over, walk, 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 because there are knee knockers and things everywhere. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And any normal day um, here just recently, I've been checking the pedometer because you showed it to me on my phone. Cause I don't really know what the hell it was, but you know, <laughs> minimum three miles every single yeah. day. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing. I don't have to go anywhere and I get three miles and I, I, yeah. I reach three decks minimum every day. Yeah. And often mm-hmm. five or six. And yeah, we're in the Fitbit. It'll tell you, you know, how many how many stories you climb, yep, and how exactly. many steps you get. Yeah. So it's like, oh, you know, I I've climbed the Mount Everest or whatever mm-hmm. whatever the the award is that Fitbit gives you, and you're like, yeah, that's just uh, being at work. Yeah. yeah. It, and so it, it's good exercise. I love it. It's kept me you know much trimmer and and in better shape, and uh, it's really good. But it's tough on some people too. You know, you have to go everywhere, even uh, the, the the heads of the restrooms or a three or 400 foot walk at times, you know, yeah. there's only, let's see, one, two, three, four heads that are, they're functional really on the ship. Um, and that's not a lot for a, a nearly 900 foot vessel. Yeah. Uh, yep. That's challenging. And of course, um, you know, I was just working with the rest of the IT staff, <clears throat> Troy on moving a network switch. Uh-huh. Uh, the ship was built a long time before the internet. And, uh, even when uh, I was serving on it in the eighties, we did not have network. And so we've run, I want to say something like two miles of fiber and, 12 miles of copper networking on here in the last decade. And uh, it is not a building. It is not, hey, I'm going to get into the T-ceiling and just run in a straight line or go through my stack network closets. It's, uh, there's a lot of armor on here. There's a lot of steel. And it is, uh, it is really challenging to get uh, new cable runs, be they electrical or network in here. And then, you know, don't even start on wireless. People are like, well, why don't you use wireless? (laughs) Because we live in a big steel box. That's why. <laughs> well, there's, there are other fun little things, too. Speaking about getting around mm-hmm. and everything, my office, there's a, uh, a window of sorts in it with a grating over it, and it's right next to part of the tour path. So there's a video on Constant Loop that has David on it. Hi, my name's David Canfield, and I served on this ship from 1987 to 1989, and this was my rack. Over and over. My home. My, my home. home. I should be able to. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that goes all day long. And then every once in a while, because people are wonderfully curious, somebody will stand on the knee knocker that's right there. There's a little chain that says authorized personnel only. And, and look through the grate. Exactly. And I love to have, be like, hi, how's it going? And they're like, oh, God. And it's, you know, some of them will get into a conversation. What goes on in there? Or they'll speculate before I, you know, sometimes I stay hidden and just listen. But that's always an adventure. And it's always fun. Yeah. But then there's the little things that you could do that are just obnoxious and great you have to go like if i have to go talk to vj up in the tour department for some reason i will pass somebody in the wardroom and then maybe i have to go to the head later on and i'll pass them in crew berthing back aft and they look at me like how did you get here it's pretty hilarious yeah um what how do we talk about climbing the mass it's not really normal if you have a we go up to the well it was normal for me when my old career but not in an office no 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 you don't really do that um you you guys have to go up there for the antennas you have yeah Yeah. the the wireless stuff it's a 12 story actually it's a 19 story building 19 story building you know um from main deck up it's 12 and uh, and then if you go even higher it's it's technically 13 yeah Yeah. and so you know it's it's a hell of a, a climb and it's, mm-hmm. you know, you get into the infrastructure on here again, be it plumbing, be it electrical, network, the antennas, 
Um, it's not like, oh, hey, I have a flat rooftop on my building that I can go install this infrastructure on. Mm-hmm. It's like, I think I will climb up a 120-foot stick yeah. and <laughs> dangle from the top of it while I try to <laughs> attach this piece of equipment, <laughs> you know, like a Christmas tree ornament. So, yeah, um, climbing, not my favorite thing to do, but I'm certified to do it. And, uh, you know, yeah. well, we, and we, we're pretty good with safety around here on it. We yep. make sure that people have the right gear and do the right thing. But again, it's it becomes routine, mm-hmm. and you don't think about it being routine yeah. until you are reminded, hey, we actually work on a ship, we're in a maritime environment, and there are things down here that you do not want to be complacent about. So Kyle, you're the only non-sailor here. Yeah. So your perspective? You've covered a lot of things that were all new to me, for going back to the storms. It was pretty cool. Um, Cause when it was raining really hard outside, it was also raining really hard inside. And <laughs> I, I was, I, I like, prefer the leaks to come from the top of the ship. Yeah. Right? Yeah. No. So when I walked in, um, for a while I was figuring, I was trying to figure out how to reorient my desk. Cause I was saying, eh, I don't really like how it is. And I gave up, I couldn't get it to fit well. And then the one solution I had was to spin it about 180 degrees. And so I'd have my, my desk up against the, basically the opposite bulkhead. And then the following weekend it rained And I learned that I cannot put anything between about six and eight inches from that wall because it pours through (laughs) the flex joint right there. And so ever since, I now have four buckets, thanks to Marian, uh, that collect water for me. And so even after the storms and the buckets being cleared out, I still have about five gallons worth sitting in my office um, just from the... Non-potable. So... For the record, well, Moran, you, you were there standards. the day I offered to swap offices, right? You remember that. Right? <laughs> yeah. that I, I, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't feel like it was a really serious offer on your part, but I, it was I a nice it. gesture. <laughs> no, but it's, you I get pulled used it back it. pretty quickly. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I have the buckets. I'm satisfied in there. I get the occasion, occasional little. To water it's feature. Yeah. People spend a lot of money for water features. Yeah. It's supposed to be relaxing and I have four calming. <laughs> yeah. You could put it's like Koi rainforest in there. cafe. Koi fish. You could put yeah. fish, you could feed yeah. them. Absolutely. That's true. I could, I mean, I should. It's the um, ambient relaxing yeah. sound of falling water. Make yes. little water features in there with little rocks. And yeah. Well, other, speaking of other sounds, we just got our. Um, what would you call that? The announcement reel? or It's the one, yeah. it's the one MC the one Automation. MC. Wasn't yeah. that a pleasant surprise to come back to when that got installed? I wasn't here. I didn't know that existed. And he, and he had, I love it. He had not experienced it. Mm-mm. So so for those of uh, listening... Uh, Probably we, heard a little bit in the background yeah, as it's, recording Yeah, it's gone today. off here. So um, we uh, we have automation on the 1MC, or the main announcing system, the number one microphone controller, which is what that stands for. Um, it's the main PA throughout the ship, and uh, we recorded some bosun pipe and... Announcements that would have been typical of a ship. Uh, and ship spells. Ship spells for the time and sweepers. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it, it was, uh, I'm sure that you enjoyed that. Well, I heard the first couple, which are brief ding dings. Like right just, now. It's yeah, going off right now. There's one going off right now. But the ding dings were kind of nice because I was like, oh, okay, it's, it's half on the hour. It's 45 minutes past, whatever it was. And then there were a couple later in the day that seemed to go on for at least 60 seconds, which doesn't sound like that long, no. but when you're trying to focus, that's a very long time. <laughs> that that would be 11.30. Uh-huh. That is exactly 60 seconds, and it is a bosun's call called chow, and uh, and and creating that sound is called blowing chow. But uh, I seriously, it, it just is. And um, a good bosun's mates would try to make that longer than 60 seconds. 60 seconds is the proper call. We had a guy on here who played, I don't know what instrument, some sort of brass instrument and could do rotary breathing, yeah. which I can't and totally don't understand. But it, you want, you think 60 seconds is a long time. <laughs> You're like, dude, please. <laughs> did you get your broom issued? My broom? I For sweepers. I, 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 sweepers, did you not know about that? I've heard it many times. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, yes, I have my broom. (laughs) Good call. Good call. Transportation. (laughs) Oh yeah. (laughs) How do you think I got here? (laughs) A little Quidditch uh, action going on there. Just checking. Just checking. Yeah. Sweeper, sweepers, man, your brooms, right? Yeah. Well, that's the, the do they say that now with the, the mixed gender, World, uh, you know, I uh, I don't know. I know men and women man your brooms, or, or men and women sweepers is a neutral noun. Sweepers, yeah, sweepers, the neutral yeah, but, noun. But to man a station, right? Yeah, These people yeah. people they get. They just hand out hand vax now, though. Um, I think they <laughs> I, I think they they still they still call it man your brooms. It was interesting. I was talking to uh, some people on the west coast here during Fleet Week, and they say that use the use of the bosun's call mm-hmm. is optional, 
And I thought, oh my gosh, the, that's, you know, the, that's not like the Navy, 247 years of tradition unhampered by, by progress. progress. Um, but uh, apparently my, my daughter was walking down the pier and she's like, no, dad, all the ships in Norfolk use it. All the ships in Norfolk still use the bosun call. So that made me happy. I worked on a schooner one time and my bunk was between the clock in the galley and the clock in the nav and they weren't quite synced. So at like two o'clock in the morning when you were trying to figure out what time it was and you were listening for bells, one would start and then the other would and you would be like, well, now I don't know if it's the half an hour or the full hour. <laughs> it's 11 bells. <laughs> I have no idea what that what time that is. You know? <laughs> Well, I'm about out of ideas. I mean, the rest of this place is just so normal, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, more b- boring days and, you know, you just kind of come in and... Right? Yeah, punch yeah. your ticket. Yeah. yeah, nothing ever happens. Well, the yet. obvious one was the, as I learned about 30 seconds into the job, uh, was to watch your head and watch ah. your legs. <laughs> I uh, was introduced to my office and I had gone through just the port <laughs> side um, uh, door. And so I walked in and was not looking up and... First thing I did was walk straight into the corner of the vent above my desk. And oh, I forgot who ouch. it was that showed me in, but I had to hold back my my grimaces and pain because I was sure that I had drawn blood. And I sat down. I was nice and content there because, oh, I had, I, had a, I had a port light. How nice. But then I exited into the communication room at the, ra- the radio room, and um, I still have a scar on my leg, <laughs> and I almost passed out when I hit my leg so hard walking through that door. <laughs> That's the armored door. That is yes, an it armored is. Door. <laughs> yeah. And it, it won. It didn't move. My at shin all. did not win. Yeah. So no, I, I've hit that same spot a few times now, and each time I'm going to fall over. But you get used to that. Yeah. Sometimes she bites you harder than others. Sometimes yeah. it's a little nip, and sometimes it's like, hey, and you know it, and it's on there for a while. Yeah. 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 Right in my shin. It's nice and bruised. Just a permanent bruise right there. Are you happy here, Kyle? Yes. <laughs> 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 Just check in. Sparky move. Wanted to check in, you know. Just sharing yeah. pleasantries here. It's, uh, it, 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 I always tell people, you know, when you look up to avoid it in your head, you're going to trip. When you look down yep. to avoid tripping, you're going to run your head, head into something. You know, yeah. What messes me up is wearing a, a hat or a cap or a helmet is way worse. I way, hate it. Way I hate worse. it. I, you know, I don't know whether it's just because I grew up here or because I'm used to being on ships or whatnot, but I can do a dead run down the P-Way and not hit my head. I hit my head in two places. One of them's on an exit sign that did not used to be here. Uh-huh, that's legit, yeah. <laughs> and the other one is anytime I have a hard hat or a ball cap on, I whack my head It, on it messes everything. up your line of sight, you don't see it, and you go, yep. No, yeah, bad yeah. word comes out. So, <laughs> well, I'm glad you're happy, Kyle. I am. It is, it is a very, very unique and fun place to work. I wasn't scared until we started to float around the other the other day, but uh, it's a great time. Yeah. Yep. When you see me running, um, yeah, try to keep up. Keep up, yeah. 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 <laughs> yep. or, or if you see me really, really scared, or you know, tears in my eyes, then you, you might want to share some of that emotion. You know, even, even, be, <laughs> even being a sailor, though, I mean, we all the complacency is the thing that always gets me. I'm sitting at my desk, which is on the port side, it's on the on the water side, and I hear five sharp blasts repeating in the channel uh-huh. right outside my office. So what, do stupid. I, so what do I do? I go running to the port side rail. What's going on? Yep. <laughs> like, what is about to hit us? I probably should not be here. Maybe I should leave the other direction. By the way, this might be the last thing we've, we're yeah. running out of time here, but yeah. um, what other location that you've worked at can claim that a ship might hit you? That's true. You know, and it's actually something to consider. We're in the main channel of once again, that busiest Harbor here in the nation. And, um, ships can lose steerage. They can lose uh-huh. propulsion. And even with a tugboat on it, they may not be able to stop it. Yep. And I, I've had legitimate conversations with uh, the port pilots and the port police about what to do and who to call and stuff like that. So that's something you'll, you're not going to run into very often, I don't think. But all in all, I think one of the neatest places to work ever. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Wouldn't trade it for the world. No. Nope. Yep. All right, guys. Um, I guess that wraps it up. Fun. Certainly appreciate you guys listening, uh, and uh, would suggest if you want to get a hold of us, comments, questions. You can't really send rude gestures via email, but comments and questions can be sent to podcast, p o d c a s t podcast at labattleship.com. or as all of you know, I like to say labattleship.com, podcast at labattleship. Um, we would love to take on any topic that you want. Enjoy um, your. Uh, patronage, if you will, and uh, feel free to go to those websites Kyle mentioned, uh, pacificbattleship.com slash donate, because that's what allows us to stay here and join in next time for another exciting episode of Scuttlebutt, the official podcast of the National Museum of the Surface Navy. Mm-hmm.